Today is going to be a beginner's guide to the press handstand. So press handstand is when we go up onto tippy toes, pull all our weight into our hands and shoulders, press up, hold the handstand, show control, come back down with control, back to kiss the toes. Now we could go through the straddle like I just done, which most people will do to start with because that tends to be the easiest one, but there are other versions. There's tuck press, which starts in the same position, but then you bend the knees, pass through the tuck, up to handstand, and back down again. There is pike press, which is seen as the hardest variation unless you're very flexible in the forward fold. If you're very flexible in the forward fold, it could be the way you could unlock the press very quickly. So the pike press is exactly the same, but we have dead straight legs, and then we press up from there. Now I'm going to show different variations for people that don't have a freestand and handstand yet. I recommend that you get a freestand and handstand as quick as possible and make that number one priority. But you can work towards press handstand if you're still up against the wall. And I'm going to show variations for those of you that already have a strong freestand in and then are doing things away from the wall. So first of all, let's have a look at what we're dealing with in terms of flexibility. So I would lay down on your back on the floor, video from the side so you can see what you're doing. Now, ideally hold in a handstand position, I'm gonna take my legs to the side. I'm gonna try and keep my feet as close to the floor as possible, all the way through, finish there. So I'm replicating the pathway of the press handstand. So you see that movement is exactly the same as the straddle press. Now the more flexible I am, the closer I can keep my feet to the floor. The less flexible my feet are gonna go up. And notice when it goes up, it's much harder. Some of you might need to hold on to something. So hold on to a dumbbell or a fixed object and that will help you go through that range. That one is slightly harder for females because of the shape and position of the pelvis. And then the other thing we want to assess is how close can we get our hip to being on top of our hands. So if I use this straight line, I'm going to put my palms down onto the floor. I'm going to be roughly shoulder width apart or a little bit wider. Videoing from the side, see where your hip comes to relevant, relevant to your palms. So you see there, when my hip gets levels, the hip crease, see I can float off in that position because I've put enough weight and energy just in front of the hands to make my feet and my legs feel light. So don't worry if you can't lift off yet, that's obviously where we're going to work towards. So you might be somewhere like this, and then we know we've got to try and get this hip on top of the hand. Now for each of the presses, there is a difference between where we use strength and flexibility. So flexibility is when we stack very nicely. So I'm gonna be very close to my hands, stack on top, come around the outside, whoops, mind the wall, and back down. Strength is where we have a bigger distance between our hands and our feet. And then I planch the shoulders forwards more and press up from there. Now you can hear from my voice that's slightly harder to do that variation. So straight away from those assessments, you should be able to work out what you need to work on as a priority. For those of you that look like this, in this position, or you're like this, flexibility needs to be number one. I'd recommend Jefferson curls for the hamstrings and calves and just that posterior chain. So rolling down through the spine, so chin to chest, rolling down through upper back, mid back, low back, and lock the knees backwards, go as deep as you can. If you can touch the floor, raise your feet up on a box. I have a video on the Jefferson curl where I go into much more detail. I'll stick that in the description. The other biggie in terms of this position, so this flexibility position here, is the pancake. So your straddle pancake position. So where are you in terms of this? If it looks like this, Again, priority, we want to sit in this position every day, stick some cushions under your butt, sit there, watch TV, eat your dinner, play with the kids in this position, and also doing things like straddle good mornings and that. And then for the beginner, I would be working three different drills. We want to be doing something that conditions the bottom position. So this position, just before takeoff, we want to be hanging out in this position, doing things like straddle hops when I'm walking forwards, and also just hanging out in that position trying to make the toes as light as possible, trying to get the energy to go up and forwards. Then we want to be working the full pathway. Now there's a few different ways you can work the full pathway. We could do an eccentric, so coming down very slowly through the movement, and that can either be done freestanding. So I'm gonna pass through the movement as slow as possible, 
trying to find if there's any gaps through there. Now, if you do drop like that, there's a gap there. We need to fill that gap with time under tension. So if you're working full range of motion eccentrics, make sure there's no gaps. If there is a gap, we need to make it easier. How do we make it easier? We go against the wall. Now, obviously, if you're freestanding, you'll be against the wall anyway. Now, in terms of straddle press, there's two main variations of a back-to-wall eccentric, and I recommend you start with the back-to-wall if you're a beginner. So kicking up to the wall. Now, notice I have the hands slightly turned out. I'm gonna take all of my back and my shoulders against the wall, and then I'm gonna go out to my straddle. Now, at this point, I need to try and focus on bending or flexing the low back, so rounding the low back into the wall, trying to push the low back into the wall. And then as I come to this bit, now it's mid-back, now it's upper back, down to tippy toes. Now, if I find I fall on that one, I can move the hands further away. And just be careful if you move the hands further away, that it is gonna dump more energy into the wrists. So make sure you turn out a little bit more and make sure that you don't collapse in the void. You wanna be pushing your back into the wall at all times. The other option, if you're a little bit more comfortable on your hands, is to start in the freestanding handstand, open to straddle, take the butt to the wall. So starting in your freestanding handstand, taking your butt to the wall, then your low back, then your mid back, then your upper back, then tippy toes. Now that one is slightly harder, but if you can do it, I would do that one over the one before, because it's closer to the freestanding version. But again, if you collapse or drop in any place, go back to the slightly easier version. So that covers flexibility, the full pathway for an eccentric movement. Now we can look at partial range. Now partial range can be done in lots of different ways. I'm gonna show freestanding first, so I'm gonna go into my straddle, I'm just gonna keep going down as deep as I can. Now I'm too close to the wall. You'd have thought I'd have learned from that. Okay, I'm gonna go down as close as I can towards the floor, but showing control. I'm then gonna come back up again. So I'm like testing the water. How close can I get towards the floor and come back up? Now I could go to empty space or I could go to a target. So I could touch my toes to a box, come back up again. So the trickiest part with this when having a target to go to is to get the target in the right place. It wants to be in the path. Whoop, see, missed that one. It wants to be in the pathway for the straddle press. You'll see a lot of people will set their targets up and then they have to change their body position to find the target. We don't wanna do that. We wanna go through the pathway that you'll go on your press and then the target is in the way. That's even more common with the bottom up. So if we start with our feet on the box, so again, make sure if my pathway of my feet goes up like this, at this point here, this is where I need the steps. So I can step on them there, partial range up. Then if you can back down, obviously don't fall onto the boxes. Now that's pretty advanced to do that freestanding. We can do exactly the same up against the wall. So again, I have my target, turn my back against the wall, come down through the straddle, kiss the target, come back up again. At this point, pull it off the wall, show control. And then we have a, identified a part that we need to work on as well. So this trap free raise, this taking the shoulder on and off the wall, we need to check we can do that with some strength and control. If you can't, if you struggle with that, we definitely need to add that to the program and condition that. So all that is, is this position. So straight handstand, take the shoulders to the wall, move the head out of the way. Everything touches, but it's being led by the shoulders, pull back off as one piece. So it's like my shoulder and my, to my feet is working as one segment, on and off the wall. I'm not collapsing in the void, I'm staying as one. Ideally, you should be able to get five to 10 reps and hold a conversation there. If you can't, add that to the program. So now we have the pathway. We have the eccentric full range of motion. We have the partial range either to freestand into empty air, empty air, so not going to a target, and then we have actually going to a target and coming back up. The cool thing with the target is it's measurable, but just make sure that you're not trying to find the target and going down the wrong pathway. Now those are the main movements, but there's a couple of other things I would do or at least make sure you can do, and you can add that to your program in some way. So, so number one is jumping through the pathway. So we should be able to jump through the pathway that we're trying to press through. So for the straddle press to handstand, I'm going to jump through the straddle pathway to the handstand and back down again. So through the pathway. Now, if you are close to the press, you could use this 
as a way of slowly going to the press with a tiny bit of momentum. So all you do is you decrease the jump. Make the jump less and less, less and less momentum until you can actually rock into the press. So I'm just gonna rock forwards. Whoa, that wall, Jesus. If you struggle with the jumps, practice it up against the wall. Make that part of your practice. Shoulders on top of the hands, push the floor away. Jump, try and get to the wall there, back down again. Now, if you do really struggle with the jumps, I would make that a bit of a priority. And then you wanna sit down and look at everything and work out what's your priorities. If your flexibility is terrible, work the hamstrings, work that straddle good morning. Mobility in the thoracic is really important as well, so get on that foam roller. I've got a specific video on flexibility for the press handstand, I'll link that at the end. If you don't have a freestanding handstand yet, make that a priority. Jump into handstand, make that a priority, and then have the press work on the back burner, but start working that mobility as soon as possible. I didn't get my press until I was 38 years old. I started this training at 37. I'm 45 now, I know I look much older with this beard, but it makes me so much stronger. So to recap, work that flexibility, assess that flexibility both in straddle and forward fold. Assess the pathway laying on your back, see how close you can get your feet to the floor. Assess that bottom position, where does the hip come relevant to the hands. Assess the controlled eccentric and make sure you've got an exercise where you can go through the full pathway. Assess your partial range, how far can you come down and back up again. And number one, get that freestanding handstand as strong as possible. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thumbs up and subscribe, we appreciate it and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks guys.